Hello guys, welcome to Tech Vitals. Today we are going to learn how to format and mount the file systems on the disk partition in Linux. In the last two videos, we learned how to partition the disk with MBR and GPT technique. We added SDB disk for MBR using FDisk and we also added SDC disk for the GPT partition using the gdisk command. But we are not able to use those partitions yet. We have to format and mount the file systems on them to be able to use them. So at the beginning, we are going to look at how to format a partition to use it as a swap partition. The swap partition in Linux is used when the amount of RAM or when the amount of physical memory is full. If the system needs more memory resources and the RAM is full, then the inactive pages in memory are moved to the swap space. In the Windows operating system, there we have swap file instead of swap partition and the swap space is required in Windows. So without the swap space, the Windows will not boot. But in Linux, we have swap partition instead of swap file. And here the swap space is optional and the swap partition is fixed size. If we take a look at our MBR partition, so let's see fdisk hyphen l and our mbr partition disk is slash tape slash sdb so in our sdb disk we have two partition it looks like we have four partitions here but technically we just have two partitions so the total size of this disk is 20 GB and out of 20 GB we have given 5 GB for our SDB1 partition which we can see is a Linux swap partition and the remaining 15 GB we have given it to our SDB2 partition which is the extended partition and from this 15 GB we have given 5 GB for SDB5 and 10 GB for SDB6 and these two are the logical partitions. So technically we just have two partitions here, one with 5 GB and another with 15 GB and these two logical partitions are created out of our extended partition. So even if it looks like four partitions, it is technically two partitions. Okay, so as I mentioned, this SDB1 partition is the Linux swap partition. That means we can use this partition as our swap space. And similarly, let's check our GPT partition, which is slash Dave slash SDC disk. And I'm using Gdisk because it's a GPT partition. So let's hit the enter. And here also we have three partitions. The first one, which is SDC1, is a Linux swap partition. And the remaining two partitions, SDC2 and SDC3, are just the default Linux partitions. So for our MBR disk, which is this SDB, we can use SDB1 as our swap partition and for our GPT partitions which is SDC we can use SDC1 as our swap partition. So let's begin with our MBR partition first. Okay so now if I type swap on hyphen s then it will show us all the partitions that have the swap partition. So let's press enter. Okay, so we have this slash dev slash dm hyphen one. So this partition is the swap partition and it was created while installing the operating system on my virtual box. So this partition was automatically created at the time of the installation of this uh, Linux operating system. Now let's try to make our MBR partition, which is SDB1 into a swap partition. So to do that, type 
mk swap that is make swap and the disk partition that is slash dev slash sdb1 hit the enter now type swap on and again the partition that is sdb1 okay now if we look at the list of all the swap partitions then you can see this slash dave slash sdb1 partition has been added to a swap partition now let's do the same thing for our gpt partition that is sdc1 so sudo make swap slash dave slash sdc1 then sudo swap on slash dave slash sdc1 now if we check the list now we have three swap partitions this is the partition where our operating system is installed this sdb1 is our mbr partition and this sdc1 is our gpt partition and if you want to deactivate any of this partition from the swap partition then you can just use swap off command so let's try to deactivate this sdb1 partition so type sudo swap off and then slash dev slash sdb1 now if we check the list using swap on hyphen s now we don't have sdb1 because we just deactivated or did the swap off and to make it swap partition again swap on slash dev slash sdb1 sorry i had to type hyphen s now it's back again so it's pretty easy to swap on and swap off the swap space or the swap partition but if we check our sdb partition we have these other two partitions as the default linux partition and we need to mount the file systems on these linux partitions and remember that we cannot format and mount the extended partition we have to mount the logical partitions and in the linux we normally use ext4 and xfs file system the ext4 file system is the default file system for most of the linux distros and the xfs file system is the default file system for the red hat enterprise distros so we will take a look at both of those file system and we will mount our disk partition using both ext4 and xfs okay now if we check mount and then pipe and look for sd then we have this sda1 mounted as the ext4 partition i mean ext4 file system now we will try to mount this sdb5 logical partition with the ext4 file system so for the ext4 file system the command we will be using is mk e2fs hyphen capital t ext4 and then the partition that we want to have ext4 file system that is slash dave slash sdb5 okay so the group tables has been allocated now we need to set the mount point or the mount directory where we want to mount this sdb5 partition if we go to our slash partition or the root partition and if we check the list then here we have this mnt directory which stands for mount directory we can either set the mount point in this root directory or inside this mnt directory so let's go inside this mnt directory and here let's create a new directory for the mount point of this sdb5 partition so let's create a directory named mbr there's a small typo there okay so inside mnt we have 
mbr directory and now we are going to use this mbr directory as a mount point of our sdb5 partition that has the ext4 file system let's clear the screen first now let's mount our sdb5 partition using the command mount then the partition that is sdb5 and the mount point that is mnt slash mbr let's press the enter and now if we check mount then search for sd again now we can see sdb5 has been given the ext4 file system which is inside this slash mnt slash mbr mount point now in this mbr directory if you check the list then here we have this lost plus found directory let's go inside this directory and okay let's go inside this again let's see if we can go there or not okay so apparently we cannot go inside this directory all right now let's check our gpt partition that is slash dev slash sdc so for our sdb1 linux swap partition we already did the swap on and now we have these two logical partitions sdb sdc2 and sdc3 now let's try to mount this sdc2 partition which has the size of 10 gb and we are going to give it the xfs file system and the command for making the xfs partition is sudo mkfs.xfs and then the partition that is slash dev slash sdc2 now we also need to set the mount point for this sdc2 partition so let's again go to our mnt directory here we have mbr directory for our mbr partition and for this sdc2 partition let's create a directory named gpt Oh, I have to use the sudo command here. Okay, now we have this GPT directory, which we are going to use as the mount point for our SDC2 partition. And we are going to use the same command that is sudo mount the partition that is SDC2 and then the mount point that is slash mnt slash GPT. Okay now if we check the mount and try to find the sd here so this sda1 which is the primary partition which was created while installing the virtual operating system has the ext4 file system sdb5 which is the logical partition of the mbr type partition also has this ext4 file system and this sdc2 partition which is the gpt partition has the xfs file system and in this mbr mount point we had this lost plus found directory but if we go to this gpt partition and check the list then here we don't have that directory because ext4 and xfs works differently and uh, if right now we reboot our machine the mount will not be saved because we haven't saved them permanently so if we reboot the machine then all of these mount will be lost so if you want to unmount them then you can simply reboot the machine or if you want to unmount them without rebooting the machine then that's also possible we can use the u mount command so that is sudo u mount it's not on mount it's u mount and then we have to give the mount point so if we give slash mnt slash mbr then it will on mount our mbr partition that is uh, the sdb5 partition will be on mount and if we unmount this gpt mount point then it will unmount this sdc2 partition so that's how you mount and unmount the disk partition 
along with the file system and also remember that we haven't saved any of these changes permanently here so as soon as we reboot the machine all of these configurations will be lost so in the next video we will see how to automatically mount the linux partitions by saving them permanently so that video is going to be very important because everything we did so far will not going to work if we don't save them permanently in our system so that's gonna do it for this video i'll see you soon with the next video till then keep learning goodbye